Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is uh, paper 2-3 of October, November 2015. So in this video, we are going to be doing all the questions uh, one by one and of course uh, step by step. So let's move on to question number one. So here we have to find the equation of the curve of the tangent, sorry, to the curve of y equal to this equation at the point where x equal to 2. So now if you guys want to know exactly what they're asking for, it's always best to make a make a drawing so you know what they're asking for, right? So let's say we have a y is this curve. For example, this curve. And here we have the point x equal to 2. And you want to find the equation of a tangent, which is a line touching the point. So this is called a tangent. So you have to find the equation of the tangent. So Given the tangent is a straight line, you first have to find the gradient of the tangent first. Now, to find the gradient of tangent, you must know that gradient of tangent is the same thing of tangent is the same thing as dy by dx at the point x equal to 2, because that's what we want to know, right? So let's first find the value of dy by dx at that point. So y has been given to us already. So dy by dx will be 3x squared plus 6x minus 5. That's the dy by dx. Now, at x equal to 2, replace the value of x by 2. You will have 3 times 4 plus 6 times 2 minus 5. That will be? 12 plus 18, sorry, plus 12, minus 5. That will be 24 minus 5, that will be uh, 19. But it is always best to double check, so 3 times 4 plus 6 times 2 minus 5, that should be 19. So now we have realized that the gradient of tangent is equal to 19. And now we need a passing point to find the equation. So this is the point of x equal to 2, so what is the value of y? Replace back in your equation, y will be 2 cubed plus 3 times 4 minus 5 times 2 minus 7. 8 plus 12 minus 10 minus 7, that is 3. The point is 2, 3. That is your passing point. So now using this, that will be x, y. So finally, equation of tangent can be found by y minus 3, the value, over x minus 2 is equal to the gradient, which is 19. Now we just have to uh, simplify by first uh, cross multiplying. You will have y minus 3 is equal to 19x minus 38. So y will be 19x minus 38. Five. You can check. So minus 38 plus 3 should be minus 35. And this is the equation of the tangent at this point. Now, and that will be your question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. So we have to find the values of k for which the line and the curve it cuts the curve at two distinct points. So whenever you see that, you know you have to use b squared minus for AC is more than zero. But first we have to solve simultaneously. Here we have y, here we have y. So we place in each other, you will have on one side you will have two. X plus four plus two is equal to two x squared plus k plus two x plus eight. Now we have to send everything to one side. You will have two x squared plus k plus 2x minus 2x plus 8 minus k minus 2 equal to 0. So now we have to simplify. This will become 2x squared. This will become, so if you bring this in, 2 minus 2 will be 0. So you will have plus kx remaining. And 8 minus 2 is 6. So plus 6 minus k is equal to 0. So this one is a b and c so a is 2 
b is k, c is 6 minus k. So as we have seen here, at two distinct points, we have to use b squared minus 4ac is more than 0. b squared is k squared minus 4 times a times c is more than 0. So let's simplify, you will have k squared minus 8 times 6 minus k. Simplify, you will have uh, this one minus, uh, so what is 8 times 6? 48 plus 8k more than 0. Let's rearrange this, you will have k squared plus 8k minus 48 more than 0. So now when you have this kind of uh, function, which is a quadratic function, more than 0, you have to solve to find the values of k. So first you have to find the critical values of k. So you take k squared plus 8k minus 48 equal to 0. Now we factorize k is k. 48 is 12 times uh, 4. To get plus 8, we have to have plus 12 minus 4. So finally, k has to be 4, and k has to be minus 12. Now, we have to draw the graph. This is your line 0. And since here we have 1, it is a positive value, your curve will look something like this. These two points will be your critical value. This is minus 12, this is 4. Now we want this to be above 0, more than 0, which is this one and this one. So which means the values of k that satisfy this will be k has to be less than minus 12 and k has to be more than 4. So for those two values of k, we satisfy these uh, equations. This is question number 2. Let's move on to question number 3. Given that y is equal to this uh, expression, find dy by dx. Now, the first thing you can see here is that y is equal to a fraction. So whenever you have a fraction, you have to use your quotient rule. Okay? So dy by dx is equal to, first thing we have to write the denominator as it is, then multiply by d by dx of the top, that will become 3x squared, then minus the numerator as it is, then multiply by d by dx of this one, that will give you minus 2x. And of course, everything has to be divided by the square of the numerator. So now we have to, to uh, simplify. You will have 6x squared minus 3x power 4 plus 2x power 4. And everything, 2x squared squared. Now simplify, you will have 6x squared minus x power 4 divided by 2 this square. So finally we can rewrite this now as so we have realized dy by dx is equal to 6x square minus x power 4 divided by 2 minus x square square. This is your answer for part A. Now for part B, given that y is equal to this we have to find dy by dx in this form and state the value of k. So the one thing is we can use here is you have to know that the what is square root? Square root is simply power half. So you can rewrite y as x times 4x plus 6 power half. Now we can find dy by dx. So dy by dx is equal to, you can first write the first one as it is, this one and then multiply by d by dx of this one, that will be half 4x plus 6 minus 1 to the power and times 4, which is the inside differentiation of the inside, you will have 4, right? And then plus the second one as it is, which is this, then multiply by d by dx of the first one. Now simplify, this one will go away. So right now you will have 2x, and you bring this one down, you will have 4x plus 6 power half plus 
4x plus 6 power half over 1. We have two fractions, we want to combine them together. So we have to find the LCM, make them become the same base. And one way of doing that is to multiply them by each other. So you will have the same thing because this value multiplied by 1 is the same thing, right? Then we have to cross multiply. So this time this will be 2x and this time this will become 4x plus 6. Simplify that will be 8. So this plus this will be 6x plus 6 over root of 4x plus 6. Now, last step is to factorize the 6 outside. You will have x plus 1 over root of 4x plus 6. Now you observe this one is the same as this one. So k has to be 6. That is your answer for question number 3. Let's move on to question number 4. So here we have to solve the equations, giving you answer for both x and y in the form of this. So let's do this step by step. So here we have to, uh, let's begin by making y the subject of formula. So y is 9 minus 2x. That's the first step. Now replace the y in here. So you will have root of 3x plus 2 times y, which is 9 minus 2x, equal to 5. Now root of 3x plus 18 minus 4x is equal to 5. Now let's send this one over here. In this one here, you will have root of 3 minus 4. Combine x, you will have minus 13. 5 minus 18 will be minus 13. Now x will be equal to, you can do minus 13 over root 3 minus 4. Or you can write 13 over 4 minus root 3. So let's use this one because it is a positive value. It's the same thing as this, okay? Now we have to simplify this. So we have to multiply by the conjugate of the base. Okay? So let's see what do you have here. So the base will become 16, which is 4 squared, minus 3. The top will become 13. Let's fix 13 outside. You will have 4 plus root 3. The base is, if you observe, 13 minus say, uh, 3. That will be 13. So these two will cancel out. So the answer will basically become 4 plus root 3. That is your value for x. Now let's find the value of y by using our equation here. So y has to be 9 minus 2 times x. That will be 9 minus 8 minus 2 root 3. That will be 1 minus 2 root 3. This will be your value for y. That will be your question number 4. Let's move on to question number 5. It says the roots of the equation, this one, are 1, 3, and 3. Show that c equal to minus 9 and find the value of a and b. Okay, so first we have to show the value of uh, c is equal to minus 9. So pretty easy. So when you know the, uh, the roots is this, so we know the roots is 1, 3, and 3. So what are the factors? Do you know the factors? You have to send this to the left hand side x minus 1 is a factor, x minus 3 is a factor, and x minus 3 is a factor. So to find the equation of this, you have to multiply them by each other. So the value of c is very simple because there's no x in c. It will be this value times this value times this value. So c is equal to minus 1 times minus 3 times minus 3, which is minus 9. So this is shown as required. Now we can actually ex expand this and compare for the values of a and b. Let's do one by one. So this is basically x minus 1 times this one is, so the same thing twice, it is x minus 3 square. Now you can expand this, that will be x square minus 6x plus 9. Now this will be x cubed 
minus 6x squared plus 9x minus x squared plus 6x minus 9. That will be x cubed. This, this, that will be minus 7x squared. And this, with this, that will be plus 15x minus 9. So that will be your equation of the, of the curve. We'll just have to compare now. This is basically x cubed uh, plus ax squared plus bx plus c. So by comparison, you can see that a has to be minus 7, b has to be 15, and c has to be minus 9. So a will be minus 7, b has to be 15. Okay, so just to explain everything again, the main point here to understand is, if I tell you the solution of the uh, equation is a, for example, what is the factor? The factor has to be x minus a. And now again, another example, if I tell you the solution is minus b, the factor has to be x plus b. Okay, so just so you know, you first have to find the factor in this question, then multiply them together to get the equation, and then compare to find the values of a and b. That is uh, question number five. Now, uh, let's move on to question number six. We have to solve the equation. So here we have a logarithm equations. So the one thing we can see here is that we have different bases, the base is 2 here and the base is x. So one thing we can do is we can change them to the same base, for example. So let's change this to, the, to a log of base 2. So we have log base of x equal to 2. We want to change this to the base of 2. That will be 2 divided by log of base of 2x. So this will be 1 over log of 2x. So we place back in the main equation, that will be 2 here, 29x minus 15, equal to 3 plus 2, divided by 1 over log base of 2x. Now simplify again, you can send this one up, you will have log 2, 29x minus 15, equal to 3 plus 2 log 2x. Now send all the log to one side, so you will have log base of 2, 29x minus 15, minus 2 log of base 2x equal to 3. Now we can simplify those, you can see 2 here, we can send it to the power here, you will have log base 2, 29x minus 15, minus log base of 2, x squared equal to 3. Now since they have the same log, we can combine them together. You will have log base of 2, we have 29x minus 15. And when you have minus, it becomes divide this value equal to 3. Now you have to send this one over here. So just to uh, explain, when you have log to the base of, uh, let's say you have x here, you have a and equal to b. To find the value of x, we can send this one over here, you will become a power b. Same thing will happen here. So you will have 29 x minus 15 over x squared will become 2 power 3, which is 8. Now we just have to uh, simplify again. So right now we have this equation, 29 x minus 15 equal to 8 x squared. So we just had to cross multiply. This will go here and this will go here. So now we have to rearrange. Let's send everything to one side of the uh, equation. You will have 8x squared minus 29x plus 15 is equal to 0. Now we factorize. So 8 is, um, we know 8 is what? It is 4x times 2x. 15 is, is what? It's 4 times 5. No, sorry, it's 3 times 5. So if you put uh, 5, so 15 is 3 times 5, or 1 times 15. So let's see where well, can we put those two values to get minus 29, okay? So let's see if that's possible. So we have to test and try one by one. So let's say I put uh, 
If I put 3 here, that will be uh, 12. I will put 5 here, that will be 10, so it will not be enough. If I put 5 here, that will be um, 20, and this will be 6, it will not be enough. So we have to try another combination to see if that's possible or not. Let me try 8x, x here, and then this. So I can try to have 3 here, right, and 5 here. Because 8 times 3 will be 24, 5. So minus 24 minus 5 will be minus 29. So this is good. So x have to be 5 over 8, or x have to be 3. Okay, so here both values are positive. You can use both values as your answer. We can test for the first one because here we have this. Let's test. We have 29, x, 5 over 8, minus 15. It is positive value, so it is good to go. So basically, we have two values for x has to be this and this. Okay. But now, of course, if it was negative value, we will not be able to use the negative value. But here, both are positive. We can take both values as your solution. Now, this is your question number six. Let's move on to question number seven. The velocity v of a particle traveling in straight line t seconds after passing through a fixed point O is given to you by v equal to this. Now, the main point is you have know the equation for v. Now, to help you, you can always rewrite this down as 10 times 2 plus t power minus 2. Okay? Now, part 1, you have to find the acceleration of the particle when t equal to 3. So, how do you get acceleration from v? You have to know that a is equal to dv by dt. So always you have to memorize this if you don't know. So memorize a is equal to dv by dt. So let's do that. 10 is only a multiple, it was the outside. Then we have to differentiate this one. First multiply by the power. So 2 plus t minus 1 to the power become minus 3 times 1 which is dy by dx of the inside. That will become um, so minus 20 over 2 plus t power 3. Now you have to find the value of a when t is equal to 3. So minus 20 over 5 power 3. Divide by 5 power 3. That will be minus 0 0.16 meters per second square. That is the acceleration at time t equal to 3. Okay, That is your uh, first question. Now for your second question, explain why the particle never comes to rest. Well, the reason why is because if you observe um, this over this will never, it always going to be positive. That's why it will never come to rest. So you can write uh, because, because of this, <laughs> basically. Now let's move on to part three. Find an expression for the displacement uh, of the particle from T sorry, from 0 at t equal to this. So we have to find an expression for displacement. So displacement s is equal to integration of v by dt. So you have to know this. So integration of v will be 10 times 2 plus t power minus 2 dt. 10 is only a multiple. We can leave this outside. And we have to first plus 1 to the power, then divide by the power, then divide by the differentiation of the inside that is only 1. Now, of course, plus c. So s is equal to minus 10 over 2 plus t and plus c. Now, we know that uh, when t equals to 0, s has to be also 0, so that we can find the value of c. So, replace back in your equation, you will have 0 is equal to minus 5 over, so this is, sorry, this is minus 5, because 2 plus 0 is 2, ten, minus 10 divided by 2 will be minus 5, so C has to be 5. So finally, conclusion is S is equal to minus 10 over 2 plus T plus 5. And that will be your answer for part 3 of the question. Now for part 4, we have to find the distance traveled between time equal to T equal to 3 and time equal to uh, 8. So that we have to find one by one. Distance between time equal to 3 first, that will be minus 10 over 2 plus 3, this is 5, plus 5. That will be 
that will be uh, 5 minus 2 plus 5 that is 3 and s at t equal to 8 that will be minus 10 over 2 plus 8 plus 5 that will be minus 1 plus 5 that will be 4 so what is the difference here so distance traveled is 4 minus 3 is 1 meters that is your answer for part 4 Now let's move on to uh, part eight. So we have prove we have to prove the left hand side become the right hand side. So as always, uh, let's do this step by step. So, what is sec square of x? So you know sec square of x has to be equal to one over cos square of x. Now what is cosec square of x? It is one over sine square of x. Now we have to add them together, so it will be 1 over cos square x plus 1 over sine square x. Now you can see that we have to make them become the same base, so on one side you will have cos square x and then sine square x. So we just multiply them by each other to become the same base and then we cross multiply. You will have sine square x plus cos square x. Now let's replace this back in the main equation. So right now you have sine square x plus cos square x over cos square x and sine square x. So the top here, as you have observed, it should be 1 over cos square x and sine square x. Now again, if you want to rewrite this down, you will have 1 over cos square x multiplied by 1 over sine square x which is equal to sec square x and cosec square x. This is shown as required for part 1. Now part 2, hence or otherwise, so hence means you're using your answer from part 1. We have to solve this equation. So we have seen that this one here can be written as sec square x and cosec square x is equal to 4 tan square x. So let's see how can you simplify this. Um, let us simplify everything down. So we know that this can be written as 1 over cos square x sine square x equal to 4 times this should be a sine square x over cos square x. Okay, now we can uh, simplify this one by one. So usually we have to uh, cross multiply, right, this and this. So on one side you will have um, cos square x and one side you have 4 sine power 4x and cos square x. Now let's send everything to one side, you will have 4 sine power 4x cos square x minus cos square x equal to 0. Now we can factorize cos square outside for sine this minus 1 has to be 0. So one possible answer will be cos square x equal to 0 or you will have, let's put this write this here, some more space, we have 4 sine power 4x minus 1 can be 0. Let's solve this one first, uh, pretty easy. So basically this has to conclude to cos x is 0, which is going to be, so it have to be in degrees, so cos 0 is 90 degrees. Also, it is 270 degrees because cos is in your first quadrant and in your fourth quadrant, so you will have these two values. But unfortunately here, the values of x only defined between those two and not including those two, so these two has to go away. Now we have only these two as possible values. So sine power 4x has to be 1 over 4. So sine x has to be plus minus 1 over 4 power 1 over 4. So you have these two values for this one. 
So let's write this down. The first value is sine x is equal to minus this power this, or it can be sine x is positive 1 over 4 power 1 over 4. So one by one, when sine is negative, it has to be in your third quadrant and your fourth quadrant. This is 180 minus theta, so I plus theta. This is 360 minus theta. So let's first find the value of theta. So I only find the value of theta when this is negative because it helps me to find the correct values for x. So theta will be sine inverse of the positive value of this. So 1 over 4 power 1 over 4 should be this. Now will be sun inverse of the value will be 45 degrees. So theta will be 45 degrees. Okay, so how can you simplify this now? So x, of course we, want, we don't want to find theta, we want to find the value of x. x will be according to your quadrants. It will be 180 plus the value. So 180 plus 45, that will be 225. And 360 minus 45, that will be 315 degrees. And this one, x has to be sine inverse of the positive value, which will be, as we have seen, should be 45 degrees. So now since it is positive, we don't need to use that technique here. We know that when sine is positive, it has to be in your first quadrant and your second quadrant. This is just the value of x directly, and this is 180 minus x. So 180 minus 45, that will be 135. So we conclude x has to be 45, 135, and also uh, 225, and 315. But we have to look at our range as well, our domain, sorry. It's only between 90, so this will be out and this will be out as well. So only two answers will be good for your x, 135 and 225, okay? And that is your question number two, for question number eight. Now let's move on to uh, question number nine. So we have uh, f of x given to you by this equation. We have to find the values of a, b, and c such that f of x is equal to this. So, uh, really interesting, we just have to uh, do, we have to complete the squares for this equation. So as always, I like to do this step by step. So I like to rewrite down 3x squared plus 12x. I like to leave some space and write 2. Now look at this 2, 1. We can factorize 3 outside. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make this one become 1. How do you make this become 1? You have to factorize 3 outside. You will have x squared plus 4x plus 2. Now since this one is a 1 now, right, now you can proceed with the next step. Next step is you have to plus something, which will be this number here, 4 divided by 2 squared. Now when you add something, you also have to minus the same number, so the equation does not change. Now since this was inside of the bracket, you have to take out 3 as well with you. Now we have to simplify, 3 will be 3, x plus will be plus, and this will be 2, so this will be x, not x squared, squared will be outside. So here we have plus 2, minus 3, that will be 2 squared, minus 10. So the answer will be 3, x plus 2, squared, minus 10. This is your f of x, where the values of a, 3, b is 2 and c is minus 10. Those are the three values that we have, a, b, and c. Now for part two, state the minimum value of f of x and the value of x at which it occurs. So pretty easy. When you have this equation, you know already where it is. The minimum value will be this value on the back. So minimum value is minus 10. And at x equals to Look at the value inside, you take x plus 2, equate that to 0, x will be minus 2. That's the value at which it occurs, and this is the minimum value. Now, part 3, we have to solve this equation, giving your answer of y correct to two decimal places. Okay, 
So replace back in the main equation. So right now we know what we know that f of x is equal to 3x plus 2 squared minus 10. Now we have to uh, replace the value of x by this value right here, which is 1 over y equal to 0. So we have to replace x by this value. But first, let's try to make x become subject of formula first. How about that, right? So let's do that. So let's do 3x plus 2 square minus 10. We have to equate to 0, equate to 0. Now let's make x become the subject of formula. So you have x plus 2 square will be 10 over 3 x plus 2 will be plus minus square root of 10 over 3. Now x will be minus 2 plus minus root of 10 over 3. Now let's find the values of x. x will be minus 2 plus root 10 divided by 3 will be minus 0 0.174 258 or it can be x equal to minus 2 minus root of 10 divided by 3 that will be minus 3.825742 of course here you don't want to find the value of x you want to find the value of y as you can see here x is equal to 1 over y so y is equal to 1 over x so find the value of y so y for the first one will be 1 divided by minus 0 0.174258 that will be minus 5.74 because we need the answers correct to two decimal places and now for the other value using this one will be 1 divided by minus 3.825742 that will be minus 0 0.26 correct to two decimal places and that will be part three of the question. Now let's move on to question number 10. So let me write this down. So given that dy by dx is equal to this, we have to find the value of k. So let's do uh, dy by dx of this uh, expression to find the value of k. So pretty easy d by dx of exponential 2 minus this. So the first thing you have to write down the same thing, which is exponential 2 minus x squared. Then multiply by d by dx of the power, which is 2 minus x squared. Simplify, that will become, this one is the same thing, and this will become minus 2x. Minus 2x exponential 2 minus x squared. That will be your differentiation. Now comparing the value of k, k has to be, so k is minus 2. That's the first question. Now for part 2, using your result from part 1, we have to find this. Okay, so how can we use the result from part 1? So let's see. So part 1 tells us that if you were to differentiate this, you will get this. It also means if you were to integrate this, which is this thing, you will get this thing inside. So we have to use this thing to help us find this. Okay, so here we have to integrate 3x exponential 2 minus x squared dx. So now if you observe, let's take out the 3. 3 outside, you will have this on the inside. Right? Now, we can take this one outside as well, you will have This will be minus 1 over 2 times this, if that makes sense. Because you have to send the minus 2 over here, divide by minus 2, you will have this. So basically you know that this is equal to this. So replace, you will have minus 3 over 2 times exponential 2 minus x squared. And that will be your answer. Of course, you have to write down plus c if you want to. That is also, you don't need to write that because you know this is ex the exact value, but you can write this if you want to as well. Now, that will be part two of the question. Now, uh, part three, hence find the area enclosed by the curve, okay, uh, the x-axis, and the line this and this. 
So pretty easy. If you think about this, they're asking you for this question. You have the y-axis, the x-axis. You have a curve. Let's say it goes uh, this direction. And this is the curve y equal to 3x exponential 2 minus x squared. This is the line x equal to 1. This is the line x equal to root 2. So you have to find this equation, this area. It is simply area under the curve, so you have to find integration of 3x exponential 2 minus x squared dx between this is root 2 and 1. That will be minus this exponential 2 minus x squared between the domain of root 2 and 1. So this one is found from question number 2. We just have to put this here and the limits have been given to you as well. So let's do one by one. So first we can take out this value and then do the inside. You will have exponential 2 minus root 2 squared is 2 and then exponential 2 minus 1. That will be minus 3 over 2. That will become, that will be 0. Exponential, that will be uh, 1. So you will have minus 3 over 2. Then 1 minus exponential. And then, uh, sorry, you have to write this here. And finally, you will have, basically, you will look, if you want to expand, you can expand this if you want to. That will become 3 over 2 exponential minus 3 over 2. That will be your answer for part 3 of the question. Now let's move on to, I think we have a part 4 to the question. Okay, So here we have to find the stationary points of this curve. Okay, So as you guys know, at the stationary points, what do you know? You know dy by dx has to be 0. So you have to find dy by dx of this equation. So if you observe this one is a product, so you have to use your product rule, right? So dy by dx, we first write down the first one by itself, then d by dx of this one will be given to you by um, minus 2x exponential 2 minus x squared. This is, this is done in the, in the first, you have to know this was already solved in the first part, d by dx of this one. This was solved in the question part one, and you know the answer already was minus two, x exponential two minus x squared. Okay, this was done already. So first one, leave it as it, as it is, and then multiply by d by dx of the second one, will be this one. Then we have to plus the second one as it is, and multiply by the differentiation of the, of the first one, which will be this. Now we just have to simplify now. You will have, what do you have now? Let's see, um, so we have these two common, let's take it out, you have exponential 2 minus x squared, and inside you have minus 6x plus 3, and equate to 0. All right, so let's see what are the values now. So exponential 2 minus x squared is 0, or minus 6x plus 3 is 0 x will be half. That will be the first value of x that we have We have for this stationary point. But now you have to find the corresponding value of y, replace back in your main equation, 3 times half, exponential 2 minus 1 over 4. That will be 3 over 2, exponential, that will be, um, so 2 minus 1 over 4, it is basically 8 minus 1 over 4. That will be 7 over 4. So that is your point, half exponential 7 over 4 for one of the points. And for this one, let's find out if that's possible or not. It says to find the coordinates of the stationary points. So you see you have points here. You must have more than one point. So there must be a reason why they ask you for that. Let's see what can we do here. Okay, I see there's a difference here, as you can see. I made a mistake in this factorization. Because if I do observe, I have something left over here. Okay, so something is missing. So if I take this out, I see I missed my x. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my fault. Let's try again. So let's try again. We have something like this right now. We have 
minus 6x squared exponential 2 minus this plus 3 exponential 2 minus this equal to 0. So this one is wrong right now. We have to continue with this one because I missed the x here. Now, same steps. We can just divide by this one. It will cancel out. So you will have minus 6 x squared plus 3 equal to 0. So x squared is equal to half. So which means x will be plus minus root of half, which is plus minus 1 over root 2. Okay, so let's do one by one. If x equal to plus 1 over root 2, what is the value of y? y will be 3 times 1 over root 2 times exponential 2 minus 1 over 2. Because your equation of y, you have to remember, it is given to you by y equal to 3x exponential 2 minus x squared. x is now this, so replace this, and this is x squared is 1 over 2, right? Now simplify, become 3 over root 2, and 2 minus half will be 1.5, which is 3 over 2. So that is your first stationary point, which is 1 over root 2 and 3 over root 2 exponential 3 over 2. That's the first point. And then the other point will be x equal to minus 1 over root 2. Now y will be 3 times minus 1 over root 2 exponential 2. So we have to minus and we have to put minus 1 over root 2 inside square. That will give you minus 3 over root 2 exponential 2 minus 1 over 2, which is minus 3 root 2 exponential 3 over 2. So the other point will be minus 1 over root 2 and minus 3 over root 2 exponential 3 over 2. So these two will be the two points that we need for your stationary points. So you see, sometimes I was about to make a mistake, and then I realized, reading the question, it tells you that to find the stationary points. So you must have more than one point, and then I realized I was missing an x here. I had to redo this and find those two points. Okay, that will be your question uh, number 10. Now let's move on to question number 11. The trees in a forest are dying because of an unknown virus. Okay, The number of trees and surviving t years after the onset of the virus is shown in the table below. Okay, Now, the relationship between n and t is thought to be in the form of this. Now, transform this in a straight line. So, pretty easy. The main idea here is we have to transform this in the form of a straight line, which is y equal to mx plus c, if that makes sense. So let's do one by one. So how can we transform this? So right now we have n is equal to a b power minus t. If you apply log on both sides, you have log this and log this. Now simplify this part, it will become log a plus log b power minus t. Log of n equal to minus t log of b plus log of a. So let's rewrite this down. You will have log of n equal to minus t log of b plus log of a. So by comparison, you have seen that. Uh, let me write this down again in another way so we can compare this properly. So it seems that we have log of n equal to minus log of b and take t outside plus log of t. So now this is your answer because it is a, in the form of a straight line because that is basically your y equal to m x plus c. So log n is your y, x is your t, and this is your y intercept. So your answer will be this one right here. Okay, that is your answer. Now as you can see, using the given data, draw a straight line. To draw a straight line, you need log n and t. So let's find the value of log n. So, and you know already, log n will be what? So log of 2000, that will be 3.30. 
log of one three zero zero that will be three point one one log of eight and zero that will be two point nine five log of five nine zero two point seven seven log of three nine five two point five two point six zero log of two six zero that will be two point four one Okay, so these will be the values of log n. In t, we know already it is 1, 2, 3, until 6. Now we can plot the graph. So we have to draw the axis. Um, I don't have a ruler right now. Let me just use a pen. So let me do that. That will be my x-axis. Okay, this will be my number of years. t is for number of years yeah years you have to label the axis it is very important and then the y will be let's continue okay the y will be uh, your log of n okay and where's the number of trees okay now we have to look at the values that t is from 1 till 6, right? So let's count. Here we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is perfect. So let's write this down. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can continue if you want to. 7, 8. And for the value of log n, it is between the value of 3.3 and 2.41. So let's see what can we have here. We can have this as 1, 2, 3, and 4. That should be enough, right? Now for the first point here, we have 1 and 3.3. .3. So 1, 3.3 .3 should be this one. And we have 2 as 3.11. 2 as 3.11 should be right here. And we have 3 as 2.95. 2.95. And then we have 4 as 2.77, right here. And we have 5 as 2.60, 2.60 will be right here. And then we have 6 as 2.41, 2.41 should be, this 41 should be right here. Okay, so now we have to join them by a straight line. So let me try my best. I don't have a ruler, so. So you see it should be a straight line joining all these points together. Okay, that will be a straight line. Of course, you will be using a ruler. It has to join all the points together. That will be the part two of this question. Now let's move on to uh, part three of this question. Use your graph to estimate the value of A and the value of B. So one by one, the value of A, let's see, because we have to look at the equation, right, to know the values of a and b, where, where are the values. So the equation we have right now is log of n is equal to minus log of b times t plus log of a. So this one is your gradient, and this one has to be your intercept. So let's first find the value of a. So if you observe, the intercept here is what? It is 3.5, right? So log of a has to be equal to 3.5. So a has to be 10 power 3.5. That will be 3160. Correct to 3SF. That is your value of a. Now value of b, we have to find the gradient. We have to find two points on the line to find that. So we can use uh, this point as my first point. And we can use uh, this point as my other point. So this point will be 8, 2.1. So we have two points. The first point is 0, 3.5 and 8, 2.1. So to find gradient m, we have to use 2y2 two minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 2.1 minus 3.5 divided by 8. That will be minus 0 0.175. So m is also equal to 
minus log of b so this one will cancel out so b has to be 10 power 0 0.175 Correct to 3SF, that should be 1.50, 3SF. That's the value of A, value of B. So right now our, our equation will look something like this. So log of N is equal to, so it will be uh, minus 0 0.175, which is minus this, and T, and plus A, A will be, log of A is 3.5. That is the equation that we have right now for the line, okay? Now, if the trees continue to die in the same way, so meaning we can use the same equation because it's still the same way, find first part is the number of trees surviving at 10 years, after 10 years. So T has to be 10. Number of trees is we have to find N. So find the values of N when T equal to 10. Replace back in your equation, you will have log of N has to be minus 0 0.175 times 10 plus 2.5. That will be 1.75 n has to be 10 power 1.75 that will be 56.23 so you will write number of trees will be 56 it has to be full trees right not half a tree number of trees surviving will be 56 trees sorry 56 now for part uh, 5 you have to find the value of t until this when n is equal to 10. So same equation we have log of uh, 10 equal to um, 0. Point, <coughs> sorry 175 uh, t plus 3.5 that is the equation that we have. So this is basically 1 you can check log of 10 is 1. So 1 minus 3.5 is equal to minus this. So t has to be minus 2.5 divided by minus 0 0.175 that will be 14.285 so you would say about number of years taken uh, you would say correct to um, I don't I don't know if it's four years but I will write 14.3 years correct to 3SF usually that's what we write Okay, so, or you can write full years, you have to write at least, I would say, uh, 15 years, if it has to be full years, but usually 3SF will be fine for your answers, okay? That will be uh, part 5 of this question. That is question number 11. Now let's move on to uh, question number 12. So we have a plane here can travel at 250 km per hour in still air, sets off at the bearing of... 70 degrees so let's see uh, what do we have here so in this question it's best to make a drawing so again let me just use my pen <laughs> so we have a point here this is our no flying and let's say 70 degrees will be about this point right this point so the plane set off in this direction at 70 degrees that is the uh, still air speed at 250 now a wind with a speed of w blows from south so from south has to be in this direction right from south so this direction but it's blowing up upwards so let's see it will be in this direction from south and the value is w that we don't know and it blows the plane off course, so the plane actually travels on a bearing of 60 degrees. So right now the plane is traveling on a bearing of 60 degrees. Should be in this direction. Okay. okay. Now this is 60, so which means that has to be 10. Okay, I hope that makes sense, right? Now we can continue these lines to, de to derive the angles between in the triangle. Okay, so now uh, it says find in km power the resulting speed v, that is v, of the plane and the wind speed w. So of course we have to find this step by step. So the first thing we can derive is this angle here is 10. So if this is 70, 
of course this has to be in the same direction if this is a uh, 70 this also has to be 70 which means this is 180 minus 70 that will be 110 and which means this one has to be 180 minus 10 minus 110 that has to be 60 okay so just as you can see here we have derived our main triangle now if you want to draw this again you have this triangle just like that you have this side you have this side uh, and this is straight okay so this is 110 this is 10 and this is 60 this is W this is V and you know this is 250 so you have to find the values of this and this so how can you find this so if you observe you can use your sine rule right so let's first find the value of V first one V how can you find that so you know this angle you know this side you have to write 250 over sine of the angle is equal to this value which is V over sine of this angle 110 so from this V has to equal to 250 times sine of 110 divided by sine of 60 that will get you the value of 271.3 or correct to 3SF 271 km per hour and what is the value for W so again by observation same steps so we have 250 over sine of 60 and W will be over sine of 10 that will give you W is 250 sine of 10 over sine of 60 so let's see what do we get. So 250 sine of 10 divided by sine of 60. That will be 50.1 km per hour. This will be the two values you need to find for this question. So the conclusion in this question is whenever you have question about uh, velocity and everything else, make sure you draw something so you can understand what you need to look for. It will come out pretty easily with the diagrams. So always do that. That's the conclusion for this question. So this is the last question of this paper. I hope that was uh, somewhat helpful. As always, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you soon.